For today's video, I'm going to be walking through the problem you'll rise here from the USACO uh, training website. So essentially, you're given two input strings that are uppercase, and you need to encode them in a certain way that's described in the problem above here. And if the encoded values of the two different strings are the same, you output go. And if they're different, you output stay. So the way that the strings are encoded is based on each character in the string. And what is done is that for each character in the string, so for example, U is in position 21, S is in position 19, A is in position 1, C is in position 3, and O is in position 15, is all multiplied together. And that gives you the value 17,955. And then the multiplied value of each character position in the string is then divided by 47, and that remainder is taken, and that's the encoded value. And if you want to get the remainder of a value when you divide, you mod it. So that's what it says, says here. So group number mod 47. So what we're going to do is we're going to first off program out the solution. So I'm going to include everything that we need to include. And I'm going to just include all the libraries that C++ has in the standard library. And I'm going to be using main space. So just using preliminary setup. So in our main function, oh, there we go. So in our main function, we're going to be taking in all our inputs. And as you can see here, we only have two inputs, and they are line one, which is the name of the comment, and line two, which is the name of the group, as you can see here. So we're going to declare string and string. Then what we're going to do is we're going to actually input that in using C in. And as we can see, the first line in is the comment. I can comment wrong, too many M's. And then the next thing I'm going to do is read in and now what we need to do is figure out how to actually go about encoding the strings. And since we're going to have to encode the strings a couple of times, or just two times, and then compare them, we should probably create our, create our own function for encoding, just to make our code a little bit more cleaner and uh, just more friendly to use. So because the encoded value of the string is a number or an integer, we're going to have to return the integer. So the return type of the function we're creating is going to be int, and we can call the function encode. And in this function, we're going to actually need to give the string that we're encoding. So it's going to need a parameter called, say, a word. And then what we got to do is actually return the word encoded value, the encoded value of the word. So First thing that we need to figure out is how to map each character to its corresponding alphabetical value. And in the in programming, um, each character has a existing numeric value. And to look up all those numeric values, you need to use something called an ASCII chart or an ASCII table. And as you can see here, it tells us that the letter 65 corresponds to or the letter, the number 65 corresponds to the letter A, B corresponds to 66, C corresponds to 67. And you can see that that isn't the actual numeric position. But if we were to shift it over by 64, it would give us that. For example, A minus 64 gives us one, which makes sense because A is the first value of the alphabet. And if you were to go all the way to Z or Z, and you were to minus something like 64, you do get something like 26, which makes sense because Z is the last character of the alphabet. So in order to actually get the integer position of the uh, letter in the alphabet, we can use the ASCII table. And the next problem we need to figure out is how to loop through each value and update the, or each character, sorry, and update the current um, encoded value. 
And what we can do is first declare a couple variables. So int i is going to be our loop variable because we need to loop through each character in the word. So we can call a for loop, set i, the index, equal to the first position, which is going to be zero. And while it's less than the length of the word, so word dot length, we're going to increment i by one. So i plus plus. And the way we access the word is to do word of index i. So word of index i is, for example, if we had the word abc, and this isn't valid C++, but I'm just writing this in and I'll delete it later. So i is set to zero, and while i is less than three, word of index i. So word of index zero is a, word of index one is b, and word of index two is gonna be c. So what we need to do is we need to treat each character or word of index i as an integer to turn it into an ASCII value. So just as an example, if we were to um, just output each value here and see what happens, just get rid of that, save this, um, and then uh, just call the encode function on something like a, B, C, give it a semicolon, and go ahead and run this, you would see that our program would output the numbers 1, 2, or 65, 66, and 67. And um, that is what we did tell it to do. But we don't want to output just 65, 66, and 67. We want to shift it by 64, because because as you can remember, when you minus 64, you get the actual true position. So if we were to rerun it, we can see that this would actually give us one, two, and three. One, two, three, as expected. So now what we need to do is we need to keep track of that encoded value. So what we can do is we can create a variable at the beginning of our function called one or val, and we can set it to one and every iteration of the loop, we can set val equal to whatever it currently is times the encoded character that we're getting each time. And then get rid of those here and save it. So in essence, if we were dealing with something like a, b, and c, val starts off as one. On the first increment, uh, first iteration, sorry, um, val is equal to the current value of val, which is one, times this value, which happens to also be one because we're doing a, so now val is equal to one. In the second iteration of the loop, val is equal to whatever it currently is, which is one, times this value, which happens to be two. So val is now updated to two, and when we run another iteration, val is equal to what it currently is, so two, times this value, which is C, uh, three, because C is the third letter, which gives us six. And then we'd be done, and we would have the correct value of the each character multiplied by its um, position in the alphabet. And then, instead of just returning value, we need to return value modded by 47, because the encoded value isn't just this expression here. It's this expression modded by 47. So that's what we've done here. We can save this and we can get rid of that because that was an actual C++. And now what we can do is, oh, I forgot to add a semicolon there. So now what we can do is take in all the string here and then compare them. So if encode of comet is equal to encode of group, what do we do? Well, we have to output something like go. So just C out, go in all caps, and end it. And otherwise, these, that means that these two aren't equal to each other. We just output Stay, all caps, and 
more on. So if I were to go ahead and run this and test it with the sample input we gave, it should work. So go to the side, this, just paste it. So you can see it does output go. I don't know if that's too small for you guys, but zoom in, you can see what it says go. So if I were to run again, You should be, it should, it should output stay. Go to file, a little bit bigger, control V, control C, control V, enter, it outputs stay as expected. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope you guys understood the problem, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.